wake up. <laughs> That's a, by, by the way, Travis, that is actually an Alex Dunlap production. Uh, nice. There. So that that is him going into the studio with his Casio SK-1 uh, keyboard uh, and making that one uh, for us. But welcome back to the Old Fashioned Sports Show. I'm back, by the way. Haven't been here since last Thursday. Travis, last Friday, I went for my global entry interview um, because, nice. yeah, yeah, as a guy you know tra- who does traveling, I realized very, very quickly, I'm like, I'm, I don't know why I don't have this. Thing. So, <laughs> it's a time saver and a lifesaver when you're traveling. So oh, I, I came back from Mexico a couple of times and uh, people, I'm not running drugs, I promise you. But I, <laughs> I came back and I had to go through, I was going to Dallas, Fort Worth, and that was that was kind of simple. And then one time I went through Bush uh, in Houston and I was like, ah, oh, oh I, I don't like this. And then another time I had to come through the country, Travis. I had to go through Miami. Yeah. And, and at that point, I was done. I'm like, all right, I need that little <laughs> line over there. Spent, spent this the first part of this week in um in South Padre Island, which is a really nice place. If you haven't been to South Padre, I will definitely recommend that as a place. It's worth the drive. It's worth the drive. But you know, I, I told Travis right before before we get started, I was like, hey. It's it's better than Galveston. It's better than Galveston. Travis, I know Galveston is near and dear to your hearts, more it's sentimental heart. reasons than anything else. Yeah. Um, but next time you go to a beach and you want to create some new memories, think about South Padre. I'm just trying to tell you. Nice. Not too bad. So well, anyway. like you, I've got a lot of Florida connections too. So you know, we end up hitting the beach in Florida quite a bit. But which one which what's your beach of choice down there? My beach of choice because of sentimental connections because I graduated high school in Gainesville is mm. Crescent Beach out, oh, wow. you know, kind of by St. Augustine. Okay. So that's okay. my beach of choice. But we end up going to see family in, in Pensacola a lot. So we hit Pensacola Beach quite a bit. I hit Dest- Destin, Destin, Florida. Destin is my, Florida. Yeah, that's 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 my beach of choice. If I could just sit there and be on my, I, where I can like, oh, man. Water is supposed to be clear. <laughs> what? That well, is what I like. It's a good thing we're in the SEC now because uh, you're yes. going to hit Destin a lot more now. I already booked my stuff. So, uh, but hey, man, listen, Travis is here. We have a lot of great topics, fun topics. Travis is going to sit in for Alex, who apparently has hitched his wagon and taken the boat somewhere. I don't know. I'm assuming Alex is is he's either he's he's killing something. Okay. He's either he's either killing something by by fishing or he's got a gun and killing something. But uh, good morning to everybody who's in the chat. Travis, when's the last time? By the way, a uh, real quick, Travis, real quick before we get started, what's the last time you've done a morning show? It's been a minute. It's been since the week of the the, the Sugar Bowl. We wow. we wrapped up then, so that's been how long it's been. Wow, well, it's good to have you back, Travis. We went from the Sugar Bowl, and here I am at the start of almost the start of spring practices. So there you go. I, I sat out winter conditioning. <laughs> well, listen, what we're going to do today, I think there's a, there's a there's a good topic for discussion, along with a lot of other good topics for discussion. We'll get into the Texas men's basketball team and all that that crap that happened last night. Well, actually, maybe talk a little bit about the women's team because maybe that's a better subject for us to really have. I mean, we were just being quite honest with you. Uh, but we also got to talk, we got to go where our bread is buttered, which is football. And that's what we're here for. And that's what we're here to talk about. And there is a kind of the main subject for today. But then, I, there, again, we're going to get into some others in kind of like our buy or sell. Remember, spring football, y'all, it gets started on Tuesday. Tuesday is when spring football gets capped off. Everyone's finishing off spring break this week. And then on Tuesday, we get that whole thing get started. But nonetheless, I still think we got to ask a serious, serious question. Travis, I'll start with you. All right. This is our buy or sell, the first one to get it going. Longhorn Nation should believe that Alfred Collins is ready for prime time. Are you going to buy that or are you going to sell that? I'll get to that answer in just a second, but I'll set it up by saying, look, about a year or so ago, I talked to um, Jake Lange, who helped recruit mm-hmm. Alfred Collins to, to UT and is still close yeah. with the family. You know, he talks to them a lot. And Jake was telling me, you know, former UT staffer, Jake was telling me that Collins had more 
raw potential than just about anybody they recruited. Mm -hmm. The skills are there, the, the raw potential. He's just, but because he came to football late, he hadn't developed those skills. Here we are now four years into it, and we've seen some real flashes that have shown that to be true. Mm -hmm. He just made plays on the field where you're like, wow, this dude could be a star. And yet, it's just not consistent. It's a play here, a play there. So I am a very reluctant sell. Again, mm -hmm. we're four years into the Alfred Collins project. I want it for him because he is so talented. Like, he, like I said, he makes plays that make your jaw drop where you're like, oh, wow, this guy's got it. He just hasn't been able to put it together. Maybe it's a lack of playing time. I don't know, but he got a lot of playing time under Herman back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would love to see him put it together. I just, I'm not a believer yet. You know, what's so interesting. It's fast that I, I feel like we all, you know, Albert Collins almost is a victim of his own success as, as a freshman yeah. because he made, remember the dynamic plays. I think he had one of those interceptions that yeah. I was like a line of scrimmage kind of interception. And you, you looked at it and you said, my God, like this guy, if he's doing this as a freshman, who? Lord have mercy, what is this thing going to look like a few years from now? And it's been interesting because he's had a role uh, and he's been able to play a role. Uh, but, you know, he hadn't been that consistent standout. But it, here's the deal. And this is what's interesting for me, um, Travis, I'll get your thoughts on this. When we look at Texas, we, when we look at Star Sarkeesian, when he feels like, there's a weakness on the team. He absolutely attacks it in transfer portal, yeah. right? I mean, he wide receiver. He's like, give me all of them. Who's available? I'll take them all, right? I mean, he went ahead, got a tight end, right? Guys, got a, got himself, a, you know, a linebacker, right? Go, he's always going to get DBs. You always, you notice that, and even got himself an edge guy. You know, he even got himself an edge guy that you know he you know he needed. But you you kind of notice that on offensive line, Travis. They don't ever go in the portal to find one of those guys. They, no. He is like, nah, we don't need that. So they're good as far as that is concerned. The fact that they didn't really heavily attack that defensive tackle position to say to themselves, the way they attacked the wide receiver position that said like, hey, I need some guys. The fact that they kind of laid back a little bit and said, you know, what? I, I think we're okay with this. It gives me a buy on that one. Because I, I say to myself, okay, you you're you know something, you're seeing something behind the scenes that gives you the confidence and faith that you know what, no need to go ahead and attack that position. Yeah, that's interesting. I I I I can kind of buy your buy for that reasoning. I I do wonder though, how much of that was a lack of true quality playmakers in the portal at defensive tackle? Because you know. Those dudes are worth their weight, right? Yeah. Like if you oh, have yeah. a good oh, defense yeah. at tackle, they 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 are hard to come by. Yes, in recruiting and in the portal. And I also kind of wonder if there's somebody that you know. I keep, I maybe this is just naivety of me. I don't know, but I keep looking at Michigan. Their portal opened up so late because Harbaugh left so late. Those dudes mm -hmm. didn't really have a chance to to test the waters, right? Because yeah. yeah. schools were already in session. They weren't going to leave. You can't re-enroll, so you may as well go through spring practice with Michigan, see how the new staff works out, yada, yada, yada. I'm curious what's going to happen with them when the when the portal opens up in the spring. And they've got some hosses on the defensive line who could tempt Sark into making the play. But, but I do like where your head's at that you're right. They attacked a lot of different positions especially on defense, all three levels, right? They went safety, they went linebacker, they went edge rusher, which edge was clearly an issue last season. They didn't get enough sacks like that, you know, Sark wants to get more pressure on the quarterback. So they attacked all three levels, but not the defensive tackle. So I, I like your reasoning. I hope you're yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, like they, they did get the guy from Arizona, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so I, I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for helping me out on that. While I was like, "Oh Lord, it's been a while since I had to pronounce that one." So they did. They did get him right, but that that's that's kind of like a component, right? But it, it you know, when I talk to people behind the scenes, to to your point, kind of what what Jake told you, they look at it and they say, "Man, this this guy can be special." Like this guy, and 
when you see him and when you see Alfred Collins in person, you look at him and say, that that looks like an NFL player. Like when right. when I, they're, they're, I Travis, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to practice and I've looked and I said, who the hell is that over there? Like that guy looks amazing. And it's like, and it's Alfred Collins. Yeah. And it's, it always is like, it always is him. Um, and I guess we're, you know, are, are we at the point where, you know, okay, we went from Moro Jomo and Keandre Colborn. And I always felt like, with no huge disrespect to those guys, but I felt like the bar wasn't set so high that the next group coming in to Vondre and Byron Murphy couldn't exceed that. Like, right. I didn't feel like those guys were just all world where we may look at a guy like Xavier Worthy and say, how do you replace that? Right. That, that's that's going to be a little bit harder to, to, to replace with Tavian Sanders, something to that effect. Right. So we were jailing Ford to a certain degree. I mean, he, as, as consistent as he was. Um, and, I, you know, I look at the, the Collins thing. I, the bar is now high. Right. We, we're talking about a, one guy who's probably going to be a top 15 pick. Right. And another guy is probably a day two pick unless he somehow he squeezes into to, to round one. It is a high bar to set. You're right, Travis. Maybe there wasn't a ton available to, to go out there and get. But the fact that they're probably going to roll with him as that number one guy following in succession uh, what those two guys did in front of him, it has to, it has to mean something, right? Yeah. Well, this, this spring's going to be big for him, right? And, and, and Vernon Broughton. To prove that they can bring it day in and day out, play in and play out, it's all about consistency. Mm-hmm. Collins hasn't had that consistency. I mean, he's an NFL player based off talent alone. And by the way, you know, this is a good chance for the new defensive line coach to step yeah. up and see mm-hmm. what he can eke out of out of Collins. So it's yeah, going to be exactly, fun to watch. It was exact, exactly – you got exactly what I was going to, to say is, is isn't this where, uh, you know, Baker um, kind of um, – this is kind of where he he earns his keep, right? Because I don't I don't think many of us go into this and say to ourselves, "All right, we're expecting you to kill it in recruiting in year one." Like we understand, like you're, you're coming in and in, in a little bit later in the game, you got some catch up work to do. Like it's it's okay, right? It's going to take a, t- a time for you to to get there, and that, and that's fine. But the thing that we heard a lot as relates to Kenny Baker is how good of a Te- technical coach he is right how he can teach the x's and o's and 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 be a guy that can develop talent this is where the kenny baker thing comes in right away right okay we're recruiting we kind of like well, how we had to give chris jackson a pass in year one and say to ourselves all right man hey you came in late in the game i totally understand it you know it's great that you got ryan wingo but it's okay we'll, we'll expect more out of you next year this is kind of where but but be a good technical coach with Xavier Worthy, with the Adonai Mitchells, you know, continue with the work with Jordan Winnington. This is a lot for, to me, like this is where Kenny Baker is, all right, this is what you're hired to do. You're, you're being hired to make Alfred Collins great. Right. I, absolutely. And, and you know what's interesting is when you look at Sark's hires, to me it seems he places a much greater emphasis on that player development side than he does recruiting even like yeah. you know it, it, when he hired the new wide receiver coach chris jackson it was about what he had done as a coach in the nfl and his development of players the same thing with kenny baker like right when he was talking about kenny baker after hire after the hire it wasn't about oh this guy is going to be able to go in the living room and shut it down he's going to be a close it was all about the praise I've heard from everybody else about the work he's done at Miami, that he is able to teach and coach and develop. So it seems like that's what Sark really prizes in his assistant coaches, which kind of makes sense, right? Because Sark can recruit on his own, right? He's well, he's pretty damn good at closing these guys. Um, I'm not saying he he doesn't need help. I'm just saying, like, he's a closer. He's, he's proven himself as a recruiter, but – he wants those guys to get developed on the field, which, you know, you can make an argument showing Byron Murphy going in the first round to Vondre Sweat, potentially a first round, more likely day two. 
that's going to help recruiting too. And if they can turn around and pre- develop Alfred Collins into being a, into being another high draft pick, then it'll be worth it. Yeah. I mean, like at the end of the day, there's no disrespect to Kenny Baker, but you know, he's going to go into a living room against guys who have been proven uh, in, in the college ranks yeah. and they're going to go through their list of, I developed this guy, you know, yeah. good, good example, Bo Davis, yeah. right? If the, if, K, if Baker and Davis are recruiting the same guy, one guy is going to have a resume that says, you know, roll you roll it out, right? That the scrolls, right? And it's just going to be, these are my guys. Yeah. Kenny Baker's going to say, well, you know, I, I, I work with this guy, I work with that guy, and I really, you know, it's so. But this is a good example, right? If I can, if I can turn this guy into something, that because that he gets the chance to do what college all college coaches get to do, which I love the most, uh, Travis, which is. The old staff and the new staff both take credit for when a guy yeah. develops into an <laughs> NFL guy. So it's like we recruited him, we had him for two years, and then, and then they put that on their resume. Yeah. And then the new staff, they're like, "Hey, look at what I produced!" Right? <laughs> <laughs> and they both take credit for the same guy. It's always hilarious to me. That's what Baker gets to do. He finally gets to, he can get attached himself to that, and if he and he if he can get. Collins at that high level, Vernon Broughton at that high level, and bring that 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 room up. Because Tra- Travis, as we get into spring ball, right? It which room is the biggest question mark for you heading into spring ball? Is it the defensive line room? Is it another? Is it a linebacker room? Is it which room is kind of the biggest question for you? You know, you kind of set me up with what I was about to go to anyway, so that's perfect. It the for me, the biggest question mark has to be the secondary, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Texas's two losses last year, you could almost pin on the problems in the secondary. They were, what, 115th in the country in pass defense. They mm-hmm. lost it. They couldn't stop OU in the last minute in the secondary. They couldn't stop Washington in the secondary. Now, Washington, Michael Penix went God mode, and they've got three receivers who are going to be NFL draft picks themselves. But my point still remains, the pass defense was the biggest problem, which if that's improved, and, you know, from your reporting and the war war room reporting, Texas' staff feels really confident that they are going to improve in the pass defense this year. Mm -hmm. If that's better, that takes some of the pressure off the defensive line. They don't need to be Vernon. uh, They don't need to be Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat. Right, they don't need to be an impenetrable wall because if you get a little stickier in the pass defense, you get a little more pressure coming off. You should get a lot more pressure coming off the edge. The defensive tackles just kind of need to hold up. They don't need to make the plays; they just can't give up the plays. So yeah. the secondary is the biggest question mark, and and I think there's enough talent on the defensive line to do what they need to do. Well, let's stay in there. Let's stay there for a second. Let's just right. stay. Let's, let's let's stay in that thing because I have another buy or sell here that's perfect for what you just so, talked about. Because we talked about Kenny Baker, right and, right, and what he needs to do. Well, let's do this buy or sell. Buy or sell. Terry Joseph has more pressure this year than Blake Gideon. You're gonna buy or sell on that one. I'm gonna sell. But it's not because of the dev- – even despite me just going through and saying Sark values development, recruiting still a big aspect. Terry Joseph is the better recruiter, right? And he's the key to a lot of these Louisiana guys. He's he's brought in several guys from the boot that, that are have made big contributions to this team. So if you're going to pick one or the other, for me, it would be Joseph. I still think he's – got the edge on Gideon in that aspect. So I'm selling that he's got more pressure this year. I'm going to tell you why I'm going to buy. All right. All right. And I think, I think, I think I'm going to, I think when I give you my rationale, Travis, I'm going to convert you over within <laughs> 10 seconds of what I just told you. All right. Lay it challenge, on. Challenge accepted. Yeah, easily. Let's do it. Terry Joseph, his title as it, not only as a DB coach, he is the defensive passing game coordinator. Right. You just you just laid it out for there me. 
You just laid it out for me what the stats were from the passing the passing defense last year. His title is I am defensive passing game coordinator, right? Right. That to me, then you're the guy that's got to be able to get that secondary better. That's a damn good point. You almost got me there. Oh, almost. come on, man. Almost. Wait. wait. And wait. this is why. This okay. is why. He got the passing game coordinator title in order to be able to make the lateral move from LSU to Austin. He's not really the passing game coordinator. That's PK. It's all PK's defense. He is the defensive coordinator. So that's why I'm like, all right, it's that's a good argument. But if I'm putting all the woes on the passing game just on Terry Joseph, uh, then you're giving PK a little bit of a, a – Kwiatkowski a little bit of a pass. Like I mean – it's still his title, Travis. It's his title. It's his title. You know what? Kyle Flood's title is offensive coordinator. Okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> you enough. Know, you gonna take that? You're, if if the offense isn't humming along, are you gonna blame him or are you gonna blame Sark? Well, fair enough. However, I will say this: I know PK got extended, so yeah. and I know PK is <laughs> making way more money. So I, I I do know this: if something doesn't go right. It's not going to fall on the laps of Pete K after the end of the season, right? If there's a, true. if there is a, hey, everybody take one step backward. <laughs> Pete K will take one step backward, and Terry <laughs> Joseph will be standing there looking, behind, looking around like, what the hell just happened, right? That's that's the only thing I would say as relates to that. But and that that's why I put a little bit more. Not to to your point, Terry Joseph. Very good at, at, at recruiting. You cannot deny the job that he's been able to do as a recruiter. Uh, they've been able to bring in the five stars that are in there, <laughs> whether it's the Kobe Black, the Malik Muhammad's, right? And then obviously, get you know, you, they, he works with other guys in the secondary. So we, you know, guys want to play with for him, right? So that part, I you know, you, you can't deny. But overall, though, to your overall point, when we look at the passing game. Whether whether it is Joseph or Gideon, we may be splitting hairs because I think we're both saying the same thing, right? Which is the secondary has to be better, right? right. And at, this, at the end of the day, to your point, like you said, Pettis went God mode, and we we hadn't see, we hadn't seen it since then, right? And and after that, it was just total normal, good, really good quarterback. Uh, that the same thing with the Oklahoma game as well. So that has to get better. That has to get cleaned up. And you know, the thing that was always a little, um, a little just dis like discouraging sometimes. Travis is when you we would hear things that you know there was just communication problems in the secondary. Yeah, that's kept thinking, man. You got veteran guys back there. Yeah. Right? Why, how are we talking about communication problems? I it, 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 and really, Derek Williams is probably your best, you know, safety at that moment. So that was a kind of a little bit of a thing for me. But okay, I, I wanted to make sure uh, I, I put that out there just a, 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 as well. Uh, you want to do another one? Let's do it. All right, all right. So let's go ahead. All right, I got, I got, a, I got a good buy or sell for you. Uh, that's here. Buy or sell. People who freaked out about Arch Manning's decision to opt out of that football game by EA Sports really need to get their head examined. Buy or sell. That's an easy buy. I mean, what? What the hell, people? Just because he's not going to be have his name attached to the video game. By the way, there'll still be a number 16 wearing burnt orange for representing Texas on the EA Sports College football game, right? It just won't say Manning. And he's not going to get, what is it, 500 bucks or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Who gives a crap? That has nothing to do with his development. And his preparation for getting ready for this season or or beyond. Who cares? Get a life. The problem is more people cared about this I know. than <laughs> I even thought would ever care about this, Travis. I'll be honest with you. I I, I this this is one of those things that you know, that, that thing when I reported, it, it went viral and someone was like, oh, you just tried to go viral. I'm like, well, first of all, if I knew how to go viral, I'd do it every day. Okay, like who who would I would I would put out a viral story right? every day if I could. <laughs> Obviously, I can't. So I don't know how this thing works. And I don't play video games, Travis. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm so oblivious to those things. Like, I haven't been I haven't picked up a PlayStation in years. 
Yeah. My kids play games in Roblox. I, you know, I barely know what's going on. I just check it every once in a while to make sure there's no pedophiles that they're communicating <laughs> with or something like that. No one's trying to tell them to come outside in the van. I'll see you in that. As long as that <laughs> that's all I worry about, right? So this whole thing, I had no clue. And I've seen since then the uproar. Or what's fascinating about it, Travis, is that Arch Manning, the kid who's basically just tried to be just one of the guys for as long as people have been reporting on him, a person who's never really wanted to have the spotlight on him and just wanted to kind of blend in right. and never take away anything from anyone else who's, who's respects others, respect the hierarchy. That guy has been consistent, right? And it, it consistently says like, man, I don't want to be part of that. I'm just, I just want to be one of the guys. And when he does that, people are like, oh, my God. Like, I can't believe that. I just It's a fascinating thing that I didn't realize so many people would be upset over a video game. Well, you know what, Anwar? You and I are about the same age, right? I turned 50 on Tuesday, first day. Oh, of first of all, well, happy birthday. Welcome Thank to the you. club. Yeah. Got the, got the AARP card yet or what? Not yet. Not yet, but it's, it'll come. I know it will. So yes. we're about the same age. Yes. We we, we remember how big the, I'm not a gamer either. I yeah. haven't played since I was in my twenties. Right. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been a video game, but I remember how big EA sports college football was. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of nostalgia factor here that people are amped about this game because it's been gone. Right. Yeah, I mean, this was, you know, it wasn't just like a Madden's been there the whole time. It's still huge. EA Sports mm -hmm. College football was huge, and then it just disappeared. So I think there's a big nostalgia factor built in here. Um, interestingly, by the way, I got to respond to this this uh, the the message from Ozzy. I think that's put it on the screen. Point. Put it on the screen. Yeah, he says, uh, "I feel it brought more attention to Arch Manning than just opting in, where he would have been only one of ten thousand opting in, as opposed to opting out." Now. I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. The fact that he opted out became news, mm. thanks to you, you know? <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> no, no, no. I, I say thanks to you in a good way. Because oh, okay. It, 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 <laughs> because, uh, but but that, that became news that he was not opting in, right? Yeah. If he opts in, he's just one of the crowd. He's still the most famous backup quarterback in all of college football right now. Hands mm -hmm. down. But that didn't make news. Now, having said that, I don't think that was his intention. That's not the Manning style. I think he was just said, I, I don't need it. I'm good and moved on, not knowing what would come about as a result of it. I mean, the thing is, I, Alex and I debated this, right? And by the way, Money B, I'll have to check. You have to tell me what day Alex had his Gorney rant so I could go back and listen to it. <laughs> Alex and I debated this, but I thought it was a really – I, I I stand on this because it's 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 2025 game right so it's a 2025 game right. that's going to occur right Th that there's a possibility that they could realistically have put Arch Manning on the cover if we just if you just there there sure. there would be other options there would be other people to talk about there is your Shador Sanders there's um Shadur, is this Shador's last year though 24. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So if you – so maybe there were, there may have been other options. But there, there, is a, there is a possibility that he could have been placed on the cover without ever really starting in a college football game. Big and, time. And, and so if you're like them and you understand how – you talk about Manning Way, where they're like, man, we're not trying to do anything until he proves himself in college – and they've been very consistent about that. Like, until he proves himself, you're not trying to get any kind of spotlight off the name. That That's that's a preemptive move to me, uh, Travis. And that's brilliant. And here's the other brilliance of the Manning family. And this is where the experience of the Mannings pays off. Peyton Manning knows about the video game cover curse. It's He's yeah. lived through it. He's been through it. 
Yeah. They don't want that put on Arch, right? Yeah. Let's just opt out. Let's just avoid yes. that. And as a Texas fan, you better be happy he opted out so he doesn't get the video game cover curse. Because you're right. He was a prime candidate to be the cover boy right on. 100%. And let's just be real. If we look, Last thing on this one, we'll move on. But I got enough something Manning related on that one. Let's just keep it a buck. Um that they, they need to pay they need to pay that guy way more than five hundred dollars because <laughs> if you're a Mannings you're yeah. not giving away your anything for for a couple of hundred bucks yeah. and if some some players got played if some players are getting paid more but it's probably not really a price tag that's really worth it if you're a Manning to say like no we're not going to set that price now. That price could probably should be like a few mil if we're just keeping it real. Right. How many, how much did he earn for the one card that he signed? It was like a seven figure deal. I mean, $500 yeah. is nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, Travis, speaking of Manning, let's go back to football for a second. Uh, the importance of his development this offseason is something we need to discuss more by or sell. Absolutely, by. Why? Well, when I, I filled in for you while you were on vacation with the the Sunday pulpit, and this was one of the key to do list for spring football for Texas football is get Arch Manning reps. Look, this history tells us Quinn Ewers likely is not going to make it through the season unscathed. Right? He's yet to do it. Right. He hadn't done it yet. Yeah. Um. So the odds are Texas is going to need Arch this season. Not just next season. They're going to need him this season. If It's probably better than 50-50, I think, or about there somewhere that he's going to end up starting a game. And they still have title hopes. So this isn't just, hey, we need someone who can step in and, and play. It's we need someone who can step in and play at a championship level. Sarks even said that himself, right? If for him, the development of Quinn of Arch Manning and is not just to have him play, it's to have him step in and be able to succeed when he does. Reps are critical this spring. Not just reps, you know, as a backup. He's got to mix in with the ones during, throughout practice. Not taking a ton away from yours, but he's got to get some of these snaps with the ones and be ready to go. So that if he is called upon, if he is needed, and I hope he's not, I don't want to put that on yours, right? Nobody's mm -hmm. cheering for an injury. But if the history tells us it's likely or, or very possible, I don't even want to say likely, just it's very possible that he will be needed, you've got to get him ready. And that development has to is starting now. Let me show you um, something from a, uh, a graphic. While you were talking, I went and found it, uploaded it real quick um, from from a story that I've had uh, previously. Um, this has been. Let me see if I can get this this buyer or buyer sell off of here. Let me get that. Uh, how do I get take that take that? Where is the captions? All right, let's take this off. Okay, perfect. All right. Just look here, Travis, okay? <laughs> this has just been some of the hi the history of injuries of Texas quarterbacks. We know about 2009 and Colt, right? Oh, yeah. uh, 2013, we have David Ash's first brain injury, right? Uh, 2014, we got another David Ash brain injury, and that's where we see Tyrone Swoops take over after week one, right? Yeah. 2015, we got Gerard Herb with a con concussion. Uh, we've got 2017 with Sam Ellinger uh, with a concussion and Shane Bouchelle with a bruised shoulder. 2018, we have Sam Ellinger leaving a game uh, with another injury being replaced by Bouchelle. We got 2019 when Ellinger is injured throughout most of that year. 2000 and 2020, we know about this one, you know. Yeah. He gets called the Colorado game. Casey Thompson takes over in the second half, right? There's Casey Thompson playing with the the, the thumb injury. Uh, and then of course Charles, you know, Hudson Card gets hurt in that game. You know, that's that Alabama right. the game where both of those guys kind of get hurt. Um then we got 2022 when you talked about you were missing uh, some games, and then there's 2023 where he missed two games last year. It's not you trying to wish anything and we're all knocking on wood when it's all said and done but it's just the understanding and the realization and the volatility of this position that has shown that 
it's been hard for a Texas quarterback to stay upright and stay through all 12 games of the season. It's just, again, and again, you don't wish it on them, but it's just, you got, you got big guys nowadays who are hitting you, falling on you faster guys, all kinds of things. And you may have to miss a, a quarter. You may have to miss a half. And yeah, if, the, if that happens, there's a couple of things. Not only do you need to do that to maintain your season, the worst thing that can happen, Travis, is that Arch Manning comes in and is not ready to go. Right. The Absolutely. worst thing. It's, yeah. the wor- it's the worst advertisement that you yeah. can have for Texas and Sark and the development of your QBs is that a Manning came in and he just crapped the bed, for lack of better terms. Right? That, yeah. that, that is something that cannot happen. Right, Travis? Absolutely. And that goes back to what Sark said. Like I said, he 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 needs Arch not to just be able to play, but to succeed. Right. Because for everyone, for Arch's sake, for the team's sake, for for Sark's sake, Arch has to be ready to go. And and he's he spent a lot of time last year learning, sitting and learning. I know he got in a game here or there, but that was like handing off like, like yeah. he's got to be he hasn't really experienced the bullets flying at him not not in a genuine way that has to happen this spring he's got to be ready to go so that in the fall and by the way this development that we're talking about isn't just it's not just spring and summer come the fall when the games kick off against you know ulm and whatnot he needs some not junk time snaps he needs some a a series here or there, you know, early while the game is still in the balance, just to kind of get his feet wet and be ready. So that's an excellent point on our showing the breakdown. And that's not just Texas. That's college Mm -hmm. football. Yes. That's football. NFL too. You know, it's rare that these guys go all the way through without, without needing some rest and and injury recovery time. Uh, By the way, I was so far off. It was Manning uh, sold that that card for $102,000. And by the way, Tex94, he reportedly donated that money to the Ronald McDonald House charity. So he still technically hasn't taken a dime of that. So I was off with that number uh, by a while. By a lot, by the way. (laughs) A lot. But uh, nonetheless, I totally get what it says. Uh, Real quick. If you're looking for a home in the DFW area, you don't have to look any further than my main man, El Presidente. He's got you covered, friend of the show. But more importantly, hey, it's springtime. You're starting to thinking about, hey, I want to want to buy a new house. want to go ahead and upgrade. Or maybe you just want to say, you know what, kids are about to leave. You know, it's time for me and, and, and the wife to go ahead and, and get a condo off the beach somewhere. Uh, and so nonetheless... Eric Sells Homes DFW, he's the person that to help you out with that. We got a tons of people who watch this show from the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, that's what the demographic shows. So this is right there in your sweet spot. Eric Sells Homes DFW. Once again, if you're looking for a house in that DFW area, Eric Sells Homes DFW is the man with the master plan and he's got you covered. All right, Travis, you ready to do another one? Ready to do another buy or sell? Bring it. All right, here, here we go. Uh, how about this one? We just had a quarterback conversation, so we can have another one if I get it up on the screen. Quinn Ewers will emerge as the SEC's best quarterback this season. If you, if you want to quantify best, and however you want to quantify it, whether you go stats or where you just feel like it's the eye test, however you quantify is how you quantify it. But at the end of the day, we say that's the guy by yourself. I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy. Now, again, this this goes back to what we were just talking about. Health is critical here. How many games he plays is going to be critical in his ability to reach that. And this is something else I've been thinking about and potentially going to write about some point. I don't know. But if let's circle back to our one of our earlier by ourselves, right? The yeah. passing game struggle. That means, by the way, if iron sharpens iron, Quinn wasn't getting a lot of great reps against a solid defense that was showing him a lot of looks, right? So, I mean, his development had to be slowed in some – by what percentage, I don't know. It's hard to say. You could never quantify that. But but he wasn't going up against the best of the best, right? Mm-hmm. 
if if this defense is better, that should help him develop even more. He took a huge step from his freshman season to his sophomore season, which you would expect. I think he has more room to grow, and he's already one of the I think he would have been this season one of the be- one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Uh, I think he can be the best next year, so I'm going to buy. Yeah, I, I think for me, my buy, my buy comes from there's a couple of diff- there's a couple of different ways you know on this one. One you know year three for him. Uh, and we've seen the growth from year one to year two. So we, we've seen that, um, you know, also be not not careless with the ball. Um, and, you, you know, and I, I like that interception is going to happen. DBs are going to make plays. Those things happen. But uh, not careless with the ball. I, we saw him have a pretty instant connection with a guy like Adonai Mitchell. Uh, it wasn't like, oh, my gosh, can these guys get on the same page? So. I feel good about what he's going to be able to do with these with these uh, these new guys, uh, you know, that are in there. And I think the other thing too, Travis, is when I just look at and I know this is crazy to say, and I know it's easy to say these things now, and we'll see how the things play out. But when we look at the schedule and we look at that schedule that Texas has, I, Travis, there's there's a lot of room for Quinn Ewers to really be elite. I mean, oh, yeah. there's when you look at again, when we look at the schedule, Colorado State at Michigan, UTSA, La Monroe, Mississippi State. I mean, he should go bonkers within those first five games, right? right. At least at the very least, four out of five, right? right? At the very even if we're saying moderate, just a good game, we're look we're looking at that. Uh, we also know that. And then once we get past, let me get past, to things down. Oklahoma, we know what he did against Oklahoma last year, right? So right. We, we we know what that looks like. Georgia should be a tough game, but that's at home. Uh, and so you have that. And then you're looking at Vanderbilt. And then, look, you know, when you close out Vanderbilt, Florida, Arkansas, Kentucky, A&M, sorry, it's the lower half of the SEC. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the lower half of the SEC. These are the teams – actually here that have the worst odds, Travis, of actually winning an SEC title going into the season. Now, sure, maybe one one team pops, right? You give it give it that. Maybe a team pops. But not all of them are going to. Yeah. So when you look at it, the schedule and how it lines up and, and Quinn, you say to yourself, yeah, there's no reason why he can't emerge as number one. Absolutely. And And when you – let me look at it in a different way as well, by the way. Okay. The competition to be the best SEC quarterback is okay, but I mean, this isn't for if at this early stage. I'm not looking at this list of SEC quarterbacks and going, "Holy cow!" There's a these dudes could really pop. I mean, you've got Nico Yamaleva, or however you pronounce his name, the Tennessee quarterback. He's mm-hmm. just going to be starting for the first time. Uh, Brady Cook's been pretty good at Missouri, but he's not an all-world guy. The real competition to be the best in the SEC comes down to Quinn, Jalen Milrow, Mm -hmm. Jackson Dart at Ole Miss, and Carson Beck at Georgia. Um, And, you know, I I don't know. Maybe I write off Carson Beck too much just because I I don't love Mike Bobo and the the Georgia offense. Like, I'm just not sold on them as, Mm -hmm. as an elite offense. And if Quinn hits his stride, Sark can field an elite offense. The offensive line, with the offensive line, the playmakers they have brought in to replace the ones heading to the NFL, I think this this has a chance to be Quinn Ewers going to New York for the Heisman, especially with those games you pointed out, right? He's going to get plenty of chances to to really shine. I I think he's got it, Um, but we'll see. And obviously Jalen Milrow's good, but he's good in a different kind of way, right? He's not – he's – well, I, I say that. His deep ball was the best deep ball in in college football last year that I saw. You know, way better than even Michael Penix. Like, J- 
Jalen Milrow can chuck it deep. It's his intermediate and short game that that I question. So, yeah, you know it's interesting. Uh, Naaman asked me uh, a question. He goes, um, "You know, Alba, do you buy that Ewers would be able to win a game or two just on pure grit and talent? Because in the Big Twelve Championship, I saw a beautiful game. Nonetheless, nonetheless, those uh, yards were mostly yak." You know, it's fascinating, and I wish I could find it because someone showed – it would take me too long. You know, it's interesting, Naaman, about what you what you said is that at the end of the day, most throws are actually going to be like the the, the intermediate throws. Yeah. It's just statistically um, that's usually what happens. Uh, and I have I, – I was told – let me see if I could find this real quick um, – I, there was a there was a guy that said um, his, his, his name was Kyle Lindeman um, L I N D E M A N N okay and this is right before the combine and he goes he, he tweeted this thing guy he goes when that one long bomb sends everyone into a frenzy at the NFL Combine this week just remember that in 2023 68 percent of all passes thrown were nine nine yards in the air or less. 68% of all passes thrown were, were nine yards or less. Wow. Uh, with with uh, NFL defenses focused on stopping explosiveness, Deacon Dunk is the new meta. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and not all that surprising when you really stop to think about it, right? Mm-hmm. But when you quantify it, it, it – throws it into sharp relief that, and you're hundred percent right. And by the way, that's the area Quinn excels, right? That's what makes him, I mean, it's obviously not his deep ball, but that is, uh, that is, that is where he excels. Now I, we talked about the best in the sec. That's what triggered this. I will say, obviously Kalen DeBoer loves him some deep ball, right? And I just got through saying Jalen Milrow is really good at throwing the deep ball. So that could be a pretty good pairing that could help Milrow be be in contention to be the best in the SEC. But but I like I like the pairing of yours with Sark. I like that he excels at that intermediate. Sark excels at getting his receivers the ball in space in motion. I think it's a good pairing that we have just we've not yet begun to see the full fruits of that that pairing. I think it's coming. So I, I'm still a buy on him being the best. All right, let's do, let's knock out a couple of more uh, before we we get we get out of here. Let, let's do this one here. Let's do this one because we have to. Okay, Travis, I'm ready. Buy or sell? This Texas men's basketball team will be one and done in the NCAA tournament. I mean, obviously, it depends on on the pairing, which we won't find out till Sunday. But yeah, no, I'm I'm buying it. I I had them 50-50 for being one and done in the Big 12 tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw how that turned out. Yeah, that's an that's an easy buy for me for right now. Maybe they'll get lucky and have a, a cupcake in the first round. I doubt it. You know, it's it's what going to be what a seven ten eight nine pairing. They're going to be pretty evenly matched, regardless of, of who they get matched up again. So one and done sounds about right to me. Uh, I see some 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 duns here. I, I, they, te, text not text ninety four says uh, nit. They're not going to nit, right? No, they're, 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 they're tournament bound. bound. Yeah, they're tournament bound. It just they may not want to book for a long period of time, right? So. All right, well, let's do this and transition to that one because that would be too depressing. How about buy or sell on this? We'll use one of Ketch's phrases. <laughs> Big Schaefer is a damn good coach. You buy or sell on that one. Damn good. Buy. Damn right I'm buying. They, hell yeah, he's a damn good coach. And I wrote about this on Orange Bloods this week, so if you're not a subscriber, go check it out. Uh, Vic Schaefer – this team could have collapsed, right, when Rory Harmon, their best player, went down in December. Yes. They could have collapsed. Now, they still have a lot of talented players, but it took damn good coaching to not fall off. And not only to not fall off, to go 30-4 and four on the season, win the Big 12 championship, put yourself in contention to be a number one seed. We'll see if they get it or not, but they're, they're there. They're in contention. They're no worse 
and a number two seed in the NCAA tournament. And they did all that because of damn good coaching and his adjustment of moving Rory Harmon, putting her, I mean, once Rory Harmon went down, putting Madison Booker into more of a point guard role, kind of a mix between a point guard and a forward. That's damn good coaching. Hell yeah, that's an easy buy. Yeah, I mean, to be able to pull that off and some of the things I when I read what you wrote, you know, Travis is, you know, winning the Beach World Championship. And when she goes down, like, it, we, we've seen teams like teams fold when, when your star like that yeah. goes down. Not only from the, the, the play, but, you know, just the emotional leader. Who are some of the guys that, ladies rather, who stepped up in, in her absence? I mean, obviously, the, the the big one is Madison Booker. The freshman just truly, truly excelled. But it was a team effort, right? I mean, Shea and Shaylee both stepped up. I'm forgetting Shay, Shaylee Gonzalez and Shay. I forget her last name. But they both stepped up big. They've been there all season long. They have a nice experience, mix of experience and youth. Uh, I'm excited not just for their tournament run, but – but to see what's going on ahead in the future too. That was a hell of a hire by CDC. All right. Let me ask you, let's, let's do a, a quick uh, lighthearted one before we go back to, uh, you know, at least one more football one. All right. So all right. Uh, by the way, there was someone who asked what the, these belts are. These are fantasy football championships. <laughs> Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Uh, all right. Uh, you, buddy. <laughs> light, lighthearted one. And by the way, I'm, I'm the, I just won the catches league and announced my retirement after. Season, so, uh, we're done. Uh, lighthearted one before we get back into football. Uh, by yourself, peeps taste worse than the Cadbury cream egg. Uh, I'm, I'm torn on this. I will say I'm, I'm going to buy with a caveat here. All right. First off, I actually like peeps. I'm, oh, wow. I'm a marshmallow person. Like, I wow. like peeps. I don't Ugh. go buy them, but I think they taste just fine. Ugh. Cadbury cream egg definitely tastes better. I'm going to give that. That's why I'm buying it. But Cadbury cream eggs are messy, even on the wrappers. You know, that stuff usually ekes out and they're sticky. There's all your hands are always sticky if you ever eat a damn Cadbury cream egg. There's no avoiding it. And, and I'm a little fussy. So I don't like the sticky, messy aspect of the Cadbury cream egg. Peeps are cleaner to eat, but the Cadbury tastes better. They're one, uh, both disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll start there. Uh, but the Cadbury cream egg is is that that tops it for me. So I would I, I if I had a choice and I had to eat one. I would do the peeps or the Cadbury cream egg, so I will sell on that. All right, let's do let's do um, let's do. I've got two more. Let's, let's knock these two out, okay? All right. Former UTSA edge Trey Moore, he will finish with double digit sacks this season. Are you buying on him replicating that success at Texas, the same success he had at UTSA? I'm buying it. I, I and I. I want to say it's an easy buy, but, you know, look, it's been since 2013, since Texas has had a double-digit sack person. It's mm -hmm. been a long time, so it's not an easy buy, but I am buying it. Trey Moore, UTSA is a step down clearly from Texas, right? The level of competition is insane, but it's not like UTSA hasn't played good teams. Trey Moore did it as a freshman. He did it as a sophomore. The guy knows how to get to the quarterback. I'm buying. Wow. I, I, I just got to see him do it week in and week out against good teams. Now, that being said, that being said, um, I just talked about the schedule, and I just talked about how, you know, four out of five games – Hell, if they're, if if, they're, if Trey Moore can't go off in the first four out of five games, uh, and and get at least halfway to the goal within the first out of five, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'll buy on that just because I feel like the, the schedule stacks up really well in Texas's favor. So, Trey Moore, you've you you may be into believer. Last one, um, Anthony Byersell, Anthony Hill Jr. will emerge as. 
the best Longhorn defensive player in 2024. This is an easy buy for me. I mean, he was knocking on that door already as a freshman. The reports coming out of winter conditioning is that he's taken that next step. And then when you look at who's still left, unless it's somebody like a Trey Moore, uh, maybe Manny Muhammad as a cornerback could, could end up being in that argument. Maybe Makuba. We'll have to see how he does his safety. But to me, there is no other player that has the skill level, the, the amount of sheer talent that Anthony Hill Jr. has. He's already learned how to put it to use on the college football field. Easy buy. He's Texas's best player. All right. I'm going to buy along with that as well. I think that we saw the flashes last year, but I definitely think that he puts it together. And the thing that I like is that we, when we saw the quote unquote flash, I mean, we, and we saw some consistency too, but we saw it like in a game like Alabama, right? Where I, you know, wasn't like, oh, you, you look good, but it was against lower level competition. We never saw you or heard from you again. We saw that. And so because, uh, I think it'll be called upon a little bit more because there is a little bit of that void with Jalen Ford being gone. They are going to look for a person that just steps up. Anthony Hill looks like he would be that guy. So that he would be a buy for me. Uh, but speaking of buying, though, Specs, before you guys do anything this weekend, head out to Specs for the best prices on beer, wine, and spirits. You're talking about buying hell. They'll deliver it for you <laughs> to your door. Tell, let us know. Uh, let me tell you what Specs has got for you. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets. It's Specs. Cheers to savings. And cheers to everybody there in the chat. Uh, any any final thoughts uh, for you before we head on out? No, you know, I, I mean, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit with um, the, talking about the Vic Schaefer question. Uh, I, I'm excited. I, I'm really curious to see if Texas women get that number one overall seed, the number one seed, not overall, but the number one seed in the women's tournament. I, I have very little hopes for the men's basketball team. I'm The baseball team is kind of like, they're in the middle of a 10-game home stretch, just starting a 10-game home stretch against a bunch of scrubs. So we're going to call it kind of spring training for them too. It's not, you know, they should rack up some wins here, but there's still a lot of questions on that team. It's just here we are, Omar, we're hitting it, right? Football's yeah. going to be back. Basketball's in session. Baseball's in session. We got it all going on right now. There's no better place to stay up to date than Orange Bloods, right? Hit the like button because there's over 400 of you people watching it. You people. <laughs> what, did, what did I mean? You people. <laughs> Longhorn fans is what I meant. Longhorn fans is what I meant. Hey, and by the way, if you're an OU fan or AM m fan, go ahead and hit the like button anyway, because because you're here, might as well. Just go ahead and give us a little props. It won't cost you anything. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, just that just sends out notifications so you know when we have breaking news and things come on there. So, uh, I appreciate you, Travis, for filling in. For Alex, I will be back tomorrow, maybe solo. I, I don't know. We'll see how, what that how, what happens. But I'll be back tomorrow. So uh, for Travis, who who was he reemerged, reappeared <laughs> on here. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you guys. Everyone have a fantastic day. Remember to always say, live each day like it's your last, because one day.